Yeah, last time we chatted with you, it was you and me over in the thing, and you were back in Bozeman, but you were wearing different colors. I mean, to be all garbed out in the MSU stuff, I mean, just how does that feel, getting a chance to represent again? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a blessing, you know. Um, went out to Idaho, and Coach Petrino opened up doors for me that really nobody would at the time, you know. So I'm forever grateful to him, but ultimately, you know, coming back to Montana, Montana State in particular, being close to family, uh, starting a family myself. Um, I think it was a great move for me at the time, and you know, I've been very happy with it this far. Two parts to this question. How challenging is that when you have to have that conversation with a Coach Petrino, somebody that gives you an opportunity, and then B, the excitement of getting a chance. Montana State wanted to bring Montana State guys back, and that's exactly what they've done. Uh, so kind of each of those aspects of that whole transition. Yeah, you know, he's been my mentor the last six years and someone that I definitely look up to um, and something, someone who I will continue to look up to. And I wish him and the whole Idaho staff nothing but the best. But ultimately, you know, I had to make a decision for me and for my family. And, you know, um, my wife has a very close relationship with my mother and just having that support system um, closer. Um, my brother lives in Billings. Uh, his wife, Maggie, is very close with my wife, too. So just giving her that support system was huge for me. Um, but obviously, uh, coming back to my alma mater was uh, very important to me as well. So Coming back at a perfect time as yes. well, where there's so much buzz around here with the return of Kane I own mm -hmm. and helping lead this defense. And so, what's it been like as you guys make your treks around, you guys are on recruiting visits, whatever it is, just knowing that this place is buzzing? Yeah, you know, we're, we're trending in the right direction, and that's one of the things, you know, that led to me making this decision to come back as well, you know, keeping an eye on Coach Cho and what he's been doing over here the last three years. I just feel like it was a perfect place for me to come back and add value to this university that's given me so much, you know. And, you know, talk about Kane. He's, uh, he was my coach while I was here, and so he was someone who I looked up to, um, someone who really became a friend of mine after playing here. Um, we kept that relationship as he uh, was here at Montana State and then obviously uh, on to Washington. But um, getting an opportunity to work with him has been awesome. Uh, very sharp. Uh, love what he's bringing back from UW. And I think it's going to, uh, we, we can implement it very easily and very well. And I think we got the pieces to be very good on defense. So back in the day, you're sitting in the meeting room. Kane's up here at the whiteboard. Yeah. You have to sit, shut up, and listen. How much fun is it now to maybe be able to chime in every now and again with, well, what if we, you know, yeah. being able to pitch in in some of the meetings and working together? Well, that's uh, the thing about Kane. You know, he, uh, he has a very defined vision of what he wants, but he is very open to other ideas. So, you know, I can bring an idea to him and say, hey, I've done this in the past that's worked well for us, worked well for me. Is it something that you're okay implementing? And he's been very open to those ideas. Uh, sometimes if it doesn't match up with what his vision of the defenses is, you know, we got to move on to something else. But uh, I think, you know, just working with a guy who's open to those ideas uh, has been very, very fun for me. In your opinion, what's kind of that one thing that you really bring to the table that you just feel confident in with this position group uh, coming back here with all the experience you've gathered over the last six, seven years? Yeah, you know, I think I have gathered a lot of knowledge, a lot of stuff that I didn't have as a player, but I do believe as a player, I was a very cerebral player as well. So I think I have a good mixture of energy being the number one thing, uh, but I think I can relate to guys because I've been in their shoes as far as being not only a linebacker, but a linebacker at this university, and then bringing that knowledge that I've gained over the last few years, you know, I think can only add to me relating to them, but also, um, you know, kind of guiding them too. Leads perfect to this question. I was going to ask if any of these guys know your history. Do they know how good you were? Do they know how good <laughs> Kane was? Do they feel like they have to listen because of that a little bit more? You know, I think probably the Montana kids have an idea. Um, growing up, either a fan of the Bobcats or the Grizz, you know, I would imagine our names showed up at different points in their lives if they were following one or the other. Out-of-state kids, not so much. Uh, but, you know, there is always that mutual support respect that uh, they have for me as a coach and I have a, a great group you know I haven't uh, had any defiant kids in the room uh, they've embraced me so that, that's just made my job so much easier. Those Montana kids know you who was that guy on the Bobcats back when you were high school junior high whatever that you were kind of 
in that same type of position? Yeah, you know, uh, I grew up in Clancy, which is a little bit outside of Helena, Montana, and I kind of had the opportunity to either go into Helena to high school or Boulder. And there was a kid by the name of Adam Cordero, who was a Boulder kid, um, who I kind of grew up around a little bit that came and played here and had a very good career as a defensive lineman. So he was just a guy that, you know, having my dad play here, I was already a Bobcat fan, but he kind of made me gravitate towards the program. Just watching from a distance, he probably doesn't know that. <laughs> What's it been like just with this group of guys as you guys go out and try and talk to recruits and trying to convince them that, hey, we're building on something here. This is something that we want to take farther, and you're a part of that plan. Yeah, you know, when Coach Cho brought me in, that was something that he uh, made very clear to me as far as what, it, what I bring to the table in recruiting. He goes, I, I can sell a vision of what I want this place to be, but you've been here. You've done that. So I want you to... More than anything, I've got the vision, all right? You just let them know what it's like to be a part of this program. And uh, with my time here, I've got nothing but good experiences. So uh, hopefully the feedback that I can give guys that are making that really the biggest decision of their life to this point, you know, uh, making that decision, hopefully I can put their mind at ease. If uh, MSU is a place that they want to be, I can make sure that this is a good fit for them. How much fun is it for you guys as a staff with just all the Montana connections and being able to talk about this town in Timbuktu that nobody's ever heard of as the best? Talk about Clancy. Maybe yeah. you head out there and get, uh, you know, get your big steak or whatever it is and stuff. Uh, you know, BJ, Matt Miller, yeah. Coach Cho, it's a Western guy. Just the fun topics that you guys can have with this familiarity. Yeah, we got a great staff. I mean, a lot of guys with Montana ties, as you've mentioned. Uh, a lot of guys that are kind of younger, and then you've got your BJs and your armies and Coach Choates, but they have they have a young side to them as well. So we all intermix pretty good. As I think we got a good camaraderie as, as a coaching staff. Um, but the guy who to talk to about Montana and the small towns is BJ. Man, he's been to every one of them. I, he talks about towns that I've never heard of, and I've lived here my whole life. So. Uh, if you want to know about a little town in Timbuktu, BJ's your guy. So he tells you, like, <laughs> you're going recruiting here. This is where you need to stop for lunch. Yeah, this lunch, is where... drink, whatever the case may be. He'll let you know. Do so. you have that one spot he's mentioned that was either the best or the you know, what was he talking about? He always talks about the bucking horse uh, deal out in Miles City. I, I, I was out there, um, shoot, it was 2004 uh, for the Mondag game. So I... I it was the only time I've spent any time in Miles City, but the bucking horse sale, man, that he raves about that. So, Seems about right for yeah. the cowboy in <laughs> yeah, PJ. No doubt. You mentioned the wife a couple of times yes. uh, this spring, newly married. Just kind of what's that all been like? How you guys met? As sappy as you want to get for the people <laughs> at home? Yeah, so my wife is awesome. She's a physical therapist. Jasmine Daly um, was formerly Williams. Physical therapist, she graduated from University of Utah. Um, but she's an athlete in college. One of the things that I, I gravitated towards her because of that, uh, she was a track star, uh, ran at Old Miss, ran the 100, the 200, and I hate to even put this on camera, but she was faster than I ever was. So, uh, we figured. you know, uh, a lot of that I kind of give her crap sometimes about, you know, I, I like her because she's a breeder, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a, you know, a long standing relationship. We've been together for about three years now and I uh, love her to death. How much fun is that just having the athletic background and kind of understanding, especially with your job, like she's going to be understanding of a lot of times you're going to be on the road. A lot of yeah. times you're going to have those playbooks on the dinner table and mm -hmm. whatever else. She, she understands all of that. And she's been very supportive. She's very bubbly, very personable. She loves being around people and she's very knowledgeable. So, um, you know, she's, the sky's the limit for her. Uh, she'll probably have more success in her industry than I ever will, um, but I'm very fortunate to have her. We'll get there, but yes. the kiddos, I mean, track, football, <laughs> they're in different seasons. They can do both in yeah, high school, but if it know. comes down to it, like, who nudges harder when the time comes? You know, I'm going to let Mama Bear uh, make those <laughs> decisions. Uh, I've been told, happy wife, happy life, so, uh, you know, I want to make her happy first and foremost, but you can bet I will be pushing for football, too. Yeah. And then what else just about being back? We've you know, been asking guys when you're not in football, when you don't have those other responsibilities, like getting out and enjoying Montana again, being like a high school kid, whatever it might be. Yeah, you know, um, I've taken Jasmine up to Highlight Canyon and just kind of tried to introduce her to how beautiful it is around here. Uh, you know, obviously it's a destination place that everybody wants to live. 
Um, but the big thing for me is just the support system that I have here in Montana, uh, be it family, be it friends, uh, just people that are willing to reach out and give me a helping hand just um, for the relationships that I've established when I was here as a player um, and even after that. So, uh, you know, it's been very welcoming. Uh, I didn't expect anything else, uh, but it's been very good.